All right, welcome back to the channel. Here we are, lesson seven in the Wireshark Masterclass. We're gonna to talk today about the time column. Now there's a thousand ways that we can use the time column. It's so important when we're doing network analysis and forensics, but how can we configure it and really make sense of this very useful column? Stick around. It's good to have you back. Again, my name's Chris. It's great to have you along in this class with me. Now, in this specific lesson, we're gonna talk about the time column. Now, the time column is something I use all the time. <laughs> I get it. Whether we're looking for delays or looking for intrusions or trying to find something that happened at a specific period of time during the day, we're gonna be using the time column. So getting used to how to use it is very important for developing your skill set in Wireshark. So go ahead and download the trace file that accompanies this video down below and you can file right along. All right, so here we are in this packet capture. Now, to start off first, I'm just going to set a TCP filter just because I don't want the UDP stuff. I just wanna talk about what's going on here from a TCP perspective. Now, over here on the left, this is where we have our time column. Now, this is a configurable time column. We can set it to do quite a few different representations of time. Now, by default, it's going to be set up as a running total of time. So the very first packet that comes in, that's going to be like a stopwatch that gets started. And then every single packet that comes in, we find out when in time that packet hit the interface. So here I can see if this first packet, after I set that filter, this is frame number five. This happened for just over four seconds into the packet capture. And something that I like to do when I'm scanning for delays is I'll just take a quick look down this column. And what I want to do is look for large jumps of time. So if I'm looking for a slow file transfer or if something is slow on an application and responding, uh, that could be where I'm looking for something to jump really far. So uh, four to five seconds quickly or up to nine seconds or whoa, all of a sudden I'm at 26 seconds in that time column. So that's something that my eye will be uh, used to looking for. But what if I wanted to set this time column for something different? So for example, what if a problem happened at 10 in the morning? And I wanted to see exactly when in time this happened. So I, what I can do is just change this. If I go up to the view menu, come down to time display format. Now the time display format always coincides with that time column. So if I have that displayed there in this profile, then whenever I change this, it's gonna reflect that column. So one thing, if I wanna see time of day, that's where I can simply just come up to time of day. I could say date and time of day, year, day of year, time of day, second since 1970. January 1st, if that's interesting for you. But if I go time of day, now this time is always going to reflect the time setting of the system that Wireshark is sitting on. So if I do a PCAP here and I've got 1445 and I send this trace file to someone who's two hours ahead of me, then this is going to say 1645 when they open it. Or if I send it to another colleague that's two hours behind me, then they could be 1245. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you're crossing time zones with your trace files, this is always going to show you with reference to the time zone of the system that you're sitting on. That's also why it might be a, another way or another consideration to think about come down to time display format, instead just use UTC time. And that way uh, we can have a better or more consistent view of uh, across time zones. Now this is also where we can say second since beginning of capture. Now by default, that's what this time column is gonna be set up for. Uh, now we went ahead and added a delta time displayed so we don't have to continue to have that there. But one trick that I do quite a bit when I'm working with time is I like to have this be that running total of time or second since start of capture. And what I can do is I can come up to, let's just say that first packet up there. I'm gonna right click it and I can do something called set unset time reference. So whenever I want to start a stopwatch on a certain packet and then time the amount of time until another packet, this is how I can do that. So how about set unset time reference? What this does is it just starts that stopwatch and then each packet after I can see with reference to my reference frame. So that's pretty useful, uh, especially when uh, I'm just wanting to start at zero at the beginning of a TCP conversation like we have here and kind of reset that clock, if you will. Now you can use more than one of those. You can come in here and say, oh wow, I got a get right there. So let me just set a time reference on that get. And if I select that packet, 
Now, when I'm dealing with uh, unsecure web traffic, it's pretty fun in Wireshark. There's some cool features. Here I can see a get went out, and on packet 23, I can see the response came back. So there's the 200 OK. This get goes with this response. So now I can see when I set that time reference, I can measure the amount of time it took to get that response back. And that's because I set that time reference on the get. So that's something that I do a lot, starting and stopping those stopwatches. Now, I can, if I have quite a few of these, I can just right click this and I can just say unset time reference. Or if I have a lot of them, let's just say I have three or four or 10 of them, this is where I can come up to the edit menu and I can say unset all time references. And that will reset everything, pull off all of those stopwatches, if you will, and bring me back to that running total of time. Now let's look at one final aspect of time that's really important to consider, especially when we're dealing with conversations or TCP conversations that are multi-threaded. And that means when I have more than one SYN or conversation happening at once. And that's what we can see here. We see that there, here's three SYNs and these are all on three different client side ephemeral ports. So what that means is that here's three connection attempts. And here I can see those connection attempts be retransmitted. And finally, I start to see some responses come back. So by the time I'm down here, I have three parallel TCP conversations. So what that means is that my delta time over here stops being super useful just from one packet to the next from this view. And that's because I have multiple connections going on at once. So that means that this packet here, for example, packet 20, and I see six milliseconds after it is the next one. Uh, these two con these two packets are on different conversations. So this six milliseconds over here is only with reference to another packet that had nothing to do with this whole TCP thread. So there's a super useful measurement that Wireshark does, and that's what I wanted to make sure that you knew about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to TCP, and I'm going to expand this up just a little bit there, and I'm going to come down to timestamps and check us out time since previous frame in this tcp stream all right so that means that this is context based so from within this conversation this is the time from this packet to the one previous in this thread so that's super useful to have a column i'm going to right click it come up to apply as column and what i like to do is i just like to drag this guy over here so all my times are a nice little row running total time, delta time, and then time since previous. And that's kind of a long name up there in the header, so I'm just going to right-click this. I can just say edit column real quick, and I can just say uh, TCP stream, steam time, something like that, right? Just to shorten that name down just a hair. So now check that this out. Here I've got, these are all zeroed because these are the sin. That's the big bang. That's the start of my timer for that conversation. And if we take a look here, this packet happened one second after the sin in context. All right, see, I wouldn't have gotten that if I was over here in Delta time. I did see 752, but that one second really jumps out at me, doesn't it? And as I come down, 281 milliseconds. If I come over here to my Delta time, this is just 30 milliseconds. But in context, this SYNAC came back 281 milliseconds later. Whoa, that's a much different time that jumps out to me, isn't it? And as I scroll down, this is where I can start to see some of those larger delays. So this is a very useful column to have, especially when you're looking at conversations, several that happen in parallel. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do if I'm looking at an application that has a lot of different simultaneous TCP conversations going on, I'll go ahead and bring up the TCP stream time and I'll sort it. I'll literally just say sort and I'll jump down to the bottom and I want to look at the larger delays that are in that context. That's what I'm going to be looking for when I'm looking for slow. Now, be careful because sometimes when you're dealing with trace files that are really large or, or have long running TCP flows, a lot of times, or it doesn't necessarily have to be long running, but uh, a lot of times what you'll see is at the end of a conversation, you'll see some type of timeout or maybe the stack waits for a period of idle and then it'll go ahead and send that fin. So be careful that you're not troubleshooting a bunch of fins and resets down here that just happen to be closing down the connection. What you want to watch for is in the larger delays, especially look for the ones that are coming from the server. All right, so because that means that the server was waiting some amount of time in context to the previous packet before it, and then it went ahead and let go of this data. So that's not an always case, but a common one that I'll look for. Uh, look for the response time coming back to be that larger number.
Okay, so I hope this was useful to you. We talked about the time column and how we can set it up for UTC time, time of day. We talked about how we can set time references and also how we can add that TCP stream time in this profile. So thanks for stopping by for this lesson in our masterclass. I'll see you guys on the next video.